Hi everyone, welcome back to the studio. We're on rose number two. Now, this is the same day, I'm filming this the same day as I did rose one. I'm gonna do a couple, uh, you know, every day. And uh, you, but you can only, you know, you only have to do one. That's what I said in the first video. You only have to do one. So in the first video, I talked about how I prepped the wood. This is an eight by 10. Same thing that uh, I did uh, here on the first video. So I talked a little bit about that. So we don't need that. I still have my palette out. And this is the thing when you're practicing a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, roses and stuff to clean your palette, just put a damp paper towel with some water and just wipe through and you can clean your palette back off and put your colors back out again, okay? Just like in rose one, this is the Hansi yellow, the Naphtal red light. This is Thedal blue, red violet, black and white. And we will add more pigments later on, okay? We'll add more pigments later on and teach you some more things. Let's, let's do another one this time. And like I showed you before, I have the other frames. This is the first one, rose one. So that dried down pretty nice. Colors on there are really nice. So, you know, this time we'll have a frame and um, we'll paint what we want. And we'll justify this frame to it a little later. And I'll show you that later on in this series. All right, so I'm going to take my three-quarter inch brush. This is my number eight. Uh, you know, flat that I like to paint with, eight or ten, my favorite ones here. And uh, I'll take a little water and let's go with a soft kind of um, like a, a, a burnt sienna, almost brown. Now, burnt sienna is one of my favorite painting colors now. For a long time it wasn't. But you can make that with, you make basically an orange. It's a toned grade orange here. And uh, so I'll just tone this down. First I make the orange and then I'll add a little bit of black which actually takes it slightly green and a little bit of my cooler color here. And you can make some beautiful sienna colors. Um, I might wanna see, see about lightening that up and um, graying that just a bit more. Let's try, I like to play with the color just a bit. Yeah, see that's kind of a pretty color, kind of this real soft grade color. I like to try colors and, you know, ultimately an artist, we want to paint with as limited palette as possible. That's where you get the, the best harmony to your colors. But, uh, and you can start out with different ones, but this uh, does make beautiful colors. You can make the whole color one. This is what I always tell all my students. I always say to them, you know, you're looking at a photo sometimes that's printed with four color inks. So your printer has four inks in it and it makes thousand millions of colors off of that so we should be able to too especially if you use the primaries and stuff like we do okay so let's just drop some of that see that's a real pretty kind of color that would play up real nice against a like a yellow maybe a yellow rose let's do that with like a yellow rose maybe put a little more cool color down below here we'll tone that just a bit with some so if you're any kind of red you tone it with any kind of green and see how that just tones that down, cools it down, tones that down. It'll be a pretty little color to have here into the more of the shadow right, right down through here. And again, sometimes I'll use like water paper towel or something like that and pull through here and soften some of that out. I'm gonna pick up just a bit more water here, have a little container of water, pick up a little more water and uh, just soften this edges over here just a bit pull through. Sometimes I'll take that and just push that through like that to create. I love the contemporary broken look like that in a painting because that to me, I mean, it just adds a lot of interest. You don't have to have it if you don't like it. But uh, boy, I tell you, it, it, it is uh, so much fun to paint with. Now I'll leave that there for a second. Let's go over here. Let's take our yellow and we'll add some of that to it to soften it down. See how that tones it right on down? Because it's really just a toned yellow. So we'll take a little bit of that yellow right in there, tone it down, we'll lighten it up a bit. That's a good starting yellow here. Okay, it's a good starting yellow. Let's uh, see that yellow works really nice. Now this color works on this background because this color has the background in it. See? So there's a good size. So I first set up my color. I'm not really too concerned. I'm just, I'm looking for kind of a rounding shape here. Let's put kind of maybe two together here, something, maybe one pulling down or something. We'll do two real quick sets right here like that. Now, I want to build a little more color this time. I'm going to build a little more color right into the front up here. 
so I get that to start coming off just a bit more. It's going to take a few layers. Hansa yellow is a semi-transparent color, so it's not a real opaque color. So it'll take you a couple times to set that in there. But I, this is where I'm going to put the front of the flower. I'm going to point it that way this time. So what do we do? We want to put in the center part of our rose and stuff here. Let's make a soft violet here. I like this color into the violet. That's real pretty. Let's add just a little bit of light so it's not too dark right away. And let's just make a soft violet. Look at that pretty violet that goes in there. Now that all harmonizes really well here, right? Harmonizes really well because I'm keying off of this color. Does that make? So I'm I put on that color and keep it there for just a little bit. So I put in the top center, drop go up a third, put in, start here, walk up, lift the pressure on your brush, hit it with your finger if you need to, then come down to the lower third, strike the bottom of the bowl here, push that in. Now I don't have to go all the way around. I don't go all the way around. I only put it on the shadow side here. Let's deepen the shadow side here a bit more. Push that shadow and see, I like to push that shadow around. I like my finger to move the color I'm an artist that paints roses for movement more than anything else. Now, that's set that way. Let's set this a little bud or something here, pointing down this way, a little lighter color here, maybe a little bit of a bowl there, okay? And, uh, and I don't do it perfect, okay? Now I'm gonna rinse that real quick out of my brush here. I'm gonna take some of my yellow again. Let's build that color again. Now across here, yeah, it's not dry, it's still wet. It's still wet, but I get, gets a little bit tacky, you can build on it. So I'm gonna strike that lighter color there and pull that down and build that front of that rose. So what I did was, when I strike, I do it multiple directions and I do that real fast. Now. I paint fast, you know, and that's why we want to practice these and paint fast. I picked up the color, I struck right here, okay? Then I lift the pressure and I pull it down this way and I pull it down this way. What I do is I strike in that front contrast edge and then I have to shape my bowl. That's what I want to do. Shape the bowl. Pull in here, start the shape of the bowl. Push this with your finger so that you don't lose all of your shadow there. And that starts the shape of the bowl. I can take a bit more of this color, maybe a bit of this. Now, you could, if this starts to dry on you at all or anything like that, just put a little extender into it. It'll stay wet. You'll have that color for the entire painting. Okay. And I'll pick up a little bit of this softer. And let's just put a touch of that back here, like a back petal or something back into that. We'll put to some, maybe a lighter strike of the violets inside let's let's just do that right now take some violet see i didn't clean my brush because i want this color to harmonize the violet so i don't clean my brush and i'll push a little bit of that lighter color in there okay let's push a lighter petal right in there just go around a little bit don't lose all of that center throat shadow though we kind of need that okay just a little bit like that <laughs> And I won't even clean my brush. I'm gonna go right back to my light here and push on that edge of that rose right there just a bit more there like that. Now, let's go out. Let's go out and let's take a little more yellow here and some white, nice light color. This is the outside edge where we have that kind of right now. That would be the edge of my reaching petal out here. Pull in towards the bowl. Stop before you cover up the bowl. You can even pick up more color sometimes and widen it out here like that. Get a good nice pelt. But stop before you hit the bowl. Take your finger, push that right, that right into the roundness of the bowl so you incorporate that petal right there like that into the bowl. Okay. Let's come around to the back side here. Now you can darken down back here. Push it in. Okay, leave a little space, push it in. You can darken down, yellow down, add a little bit of pink into it. That's pretty, so that color starts to pick up and change a bit. Sometimes add another little light or a little movement. I'm painting for movement. Let's come back down to our light, little yellow. If I come down this way too far, I start to add some violet to it, right? Start to add some violet. Right now, yeah, maybe I'll keep it towards the light here. 
see what happens. Now, remember the last one I pulled out, but this one maybe I'll pull here. Maybe I'll pull out on this side. But at some point, I like to pull out, so I change the rows a little bit. So here I stroke this way, kind of curved, in, in, and this one curving up this way. Now, push in and out just a bit, just to incorporate. See how that pushes that color? That's what the heritage is designed to do. This is called shear, and I like to shear that off. It looks like you blended it, and you didn't, because I'm painting acrylic, and it's drying pretty fast, because I'm not using any extenders or anything. So I'm going to put a bit of that violet into it this time, cool this off. Let's just push a little bit. Sometimes I do more petals, sometimes I just do a color movement out like this, and I don't do the petals as much. I don't know, I, st I stop that sometimes because I don't know exactly how I'm going to paint this, but so I don't make my uh, petals too much, too severe here, too shaped, shaped up too much. Let's go back here. Let's pick up a little more yellow, a little brighter yellow, a little more white. Let's strike that across the front here. And it's kind of a pretty color. I can incorporate that right in just like that. Now, like I showed you with the last one, you know, since I do it so fast and I pick up a lot of paint, you know, I use a lot of paint. And that's one of the things that a lot of artists don't do. They don't use enough paint. I use a lot of paint that gives me a lot of paint to go poof like that real quick. I don't do it too many times because what's going to happen is you're going to blend it and it's going to smooth out. I like this movement that you get right like that. So once I see that, I stop. I might lighten this up a bit, change it just a bit here. Let's lighten that up a bit more. Come right up here so I can see the difference. This is a little bit lighter right up here. I'll pick up that. Don't quite have enough paint, so I'll pick up. I want paint. And I don't want to line those up, so maybe I'll maybe I'll start with one right in here. And I'll stop short of the bowl. And then I'll push that right into the bowl there, just like that. That makes a nice petal. Let's pick up just a little bit of it here. And push up uh, just an idea of a petal there. Let's come around, maybe tone it, maybe just a touch of the violet into it here. A little bit of light violet maybe pull out just a bit create that side here just I can start as I'm onto the inside here though I can start making a, a few more decisions about edges so I can leave more of an edge on that one but out here where since I, it's going to collide with this little bud I don't know so I won't do it yet sometimes if the paint gets a little stiff in my brush I like to Loosen it up with just a bit of the extender there. And uh, I don't use the extender all the time for, for to make it stay wet. I like, I like extender to make the paint slide. It's slippery. Now let's build this up again. Try not to lose all of that nice movement we had there. Let's just build up another little petal there. That's kind of pretty. Now if I leave that like that, which I do kind of like, that petal sitting off like that, I might lighten, just take a second stroke here, and lighten some of the front up on these guys up here, just a bit more, to create some of that here, pull that down just a bit, here, now you can uh, leave that, now we can also take a chisel edge of this petal and just kind of drop it right in there like that, just a little chisel edge, let's just pull that roundness, always that's what makes your rose pretty, is always finding that bowl that incorporates all of that together. So even if my petal here is a little wet, and if I push those all together like that, I push them right into the roundness of the bowl, and that works. That's what makes them pretty. Let's um, take a little softer, light color here. Lose a little water here, a little water. Softer, light color and create this side of this bowl here. We need a little bit of the, I don't like the VV shape right there, so I'm gonna turn the rose just slightly this way and pull a petal across this way and some of that bowl movement that way there. So that bowl just kind of rounds, rounds there, just rounds up a bit. Let's take a little light, just use it kind of on the chisel. What do you always do? Find the bowl. 
take that movement right into that bowl there. See, that makes a pretty little, pretty little movement there. And take a little drop of water there. And uh, let's build up this edge of this part of the rose right up there. That gives you a nice rounding feeling there. A little bit more. A little more. See, I just like to touch the petals and, and I push with my finger more for movement more than anything else. But you see, you can push those further back. I mean, you can do those later on. So that makes kind of a pretty little... Um, pretty little rose there with the little pinks into it you might want to take some of that soft pink now this is real dry so let's add a soft little violet here and restate that violet up on this side of that right up there by the front so that carries that through let's paint a let's paint a, a two minute bud here we'll take a bit of our yellow some of this violet nice toned colors a little light all we have to do is create the oval shape of the bud here. Buds are oval, so I'll drop a little there. And what really makes the bud, let's take a little violet with it when we do this, is the oval shape into the back, back here like that. So I push up and around here like that. And then I just pull the front of the bud down like this. So the whole shape of this is kind of an oval. Now sometimes I'll do a I'll kick out a petal if I can work it, I'll kick petals out. Now I'll do that this time. I'll kick a reaching petal out here, push that in. Let's kick out another one here. As long as the bud doesn't in interfere too much with this other rose, and I don't think so, I don't think it, that's interfering too much, then I'll leave it like that. And sometimes I'll pull light color up like this out into the front so that it's not, and see, that my finger picked off a little bit of that. To, to plan that, that's really hard. <laughs> you know, I like it, I like to look. And this is what I do with movement. Movement makes it, makes that happen, makes it really, and that's why I say I don't paint petals as much as I do movement. And just the subtle little things that happen when you paint for movement, just push that around for movement, just makes fun little things. Now, I can take a, a touch of that slightly darker color, that violet, not real dark, and just reshape the a touch of that into the center of this bud, watching what I have going on on the other one there. And that makes a pretty little color there. I should, if I'm gonna leave that though, it's a touch darker than uh, my other one. Grab a little, little drop of water, I like that. If your paint gets a bit tight, you could use an extender too. I like to restate some of that, maybe a touch darker into this one. Just restate that up and around. Pull that up and around, a little dry paint there. And uh, sometimes I'll put a little stroke of that out here onto the outside edge there too. And that makes a pretty little rose there, just like that. Let's clean that out of the brush for a second. Let's go back to green. Now you also, when you make greens, you also have this green, which is very bright. So I, you take a lot of haunts of very little, just catch a little bit of it there, but then you gotta tone it down with um, some, some of your um, uh, reds and stuff. So if you tone it with this, the color's very warm. If you tone it with this, the color's very cool. Usually I save this for shadows. So that makes it not quite so green here. And uh, let's just drop a little stem out here like this. Pull across just a bit. Let's uh, tone that just a touch more, a little more black into that would be fine too. A little more black and red here. And drop one coming across here for our bud. I like, I like my, my uh, I like lines. You know, I, it's powerful movement lines. It comes from the gears of rose mauling and stuff, I, I like movement lines. Um, you can use this now to, uh, so just a tiny bit of the blue here to start uh, shaping up what you might want to do as far as leaves. Maybe we'll put a little bit of light into that too here. What you might want to do as far as leaves, let's put a leaf set right out here. So I go one, two, and three, and if my light's up for here like this, I like to pull just a bit off, or we can stroke some light, but I like to just lift a bit of that off. Let's um, 
We're gonna have a little bit of water and just set a few. I like to use water. I, I love extender too, but you know, my my I start painting with too much extender and this I don't like stuff to stay wet for very long because it blends too much for me. I like the power of movement, so you know, I, I stay away from extender from two weight, unless we do the extender technique, which I'm gonna show you later on. But, uh, and you can decide, it's your, your flowers. And um, let's put a little bit brighter, lighter one out here like this, across this way. Here, let's see how that'll look. Yeah, that'll be fine. Here, and let's lighten that up. A little brighter, a little lighter, carry a bit more color into it. Let's take just a bit of that and hit the light onto these edges here. So that color travels around a bit. So this time making your greens, you can see it's quite a bit different. Making your greens from, of course, the yellow with just a tiny bit of that blue. Take that green, let's carry it just a slight bit more to the blue side. Let's cool it down with a bit of our red violet this time. Maybe red violet, tiny bit of black. You get a real dark, dark, dark color here. And just not quite green enough, there we go. And you can use that in close to uh, separate and do a little negative painting or shadow your leaves here a bit, like that, real quick. Gotta look at the time, you have nine minutes left to get this painting done. That's the big thing, see this forces me to when you do these time paintings like this, and they are so good for learning, you do time paintings like this, they force you into painting faster, and you break habits that way. Okay, let's just drop a few more little colors around here. Take a little water with this. Let's just do a whisper of some idea. You know, sometimes I just let the, the, uh, the leaves here just kind of I like this, just to let them play out. Just a few little stems and let them just move. I call this the little brush dance through the painting here. Sometimes, you know, you can make a nice light. I didn't do it on the first painting. I'll show you this. I, I do do this quite a bit though. Make a nice light and pull up a, a chisel edge there for the vein line coming out of the, of the leaf. I like this because this actually you know, what it does is kind of like an explosion of movement. It kind of takes your eye out there a little bit and uh, works kind of, kind of nice that way. You can have a few more little things to it. You can add a little more contrast if you want. You know, sometimes, oh yeah, I like that light up there. You can come back and work that rose again. Doesn't, just because we stopped, doesn't mean you can't come back and add a little bit, you know, more to that if you wanted to add a lighter, I'll show you, a lighter bit of a yellow into that this time. Push that in, maybe a bit more white with that. L look at the contrast to see if you, you know, what kind of contrast you want on that rose. That's kind of pretty. I do real quick strikes like that and I try not to touch it too many times because it'll, I'll lose all of my movement from my earlier strokes. The more white you add, the more opaque the color is. So I try just to keep it small, to pull out you know, like little light edges of petals or something like that, because I don't want to do too much because it will it will opaque and take out. So that's kind of a pretty, and it, so your eyes drawn into there, it comes right down to, to that one right there. Um, the leaves could have just a touch more light on it, maybe a little more yellow, a little more lighter yellow green here. Could have a, a bit more, that's a little too much here. So just, uh, when you're working with um, the limited palette of the six color set, you know, just a tiny additions of color can really make a difference. Changes real quick. Let's get just a bit more light, push that in and out. So what I'll do is I'll pull to that center vein line. That creates a bit of the leaf movement to it here. And let's just pull these in this way, right towards the center vein line, push in and out towards that center vein line. That creates the movement in and out of the leaf and along the growth lines of that, of the uh, vein line. So 
it's a quick way for a stroke artist or you know a real quick a la prima painter to suggest the movement of the leaf here maybe a little more darker here color just to find myself a nice dark it could be darker red could be towards that that green side just a bit here and we'll take a bit of water with that and uh, you could use this as a as a background kind of shadowing here see and that lifts that rose just a little bit of it here if you wanted to define part of that bud or something like that or pull some of that down sometimes I'll do that sometimes I'll take a nice wet stroke of that and, and pull some of that down creating a little more of a shadow line down coming <laughs> I just pulled white from the my paper towel but pulling them a little bit more of a shadow line down and like that so you can have a little more light and shadow to your background but that makes a nice um, kind of a rose real soft you got some real soft back here you could pop more edges but I like the you know I like roses and stuff to lose their edges back there sometimes they're different we'll paint all different kinds let's put just a bit of an edge there we'll paint all different kinds and all different kinds of techniques and colors and everything they'll be a lot of fun but uh, try practicing them painting them so 26 minutes you can do it they're a lot of fun you know try to do it within that time a couple of quick little roses there we'll drop that into a uh, frame here now you take any kind of a darker burnt sienna kind of color there with that into that frame it's a pretty little painting you could break this up with a little light if you wanted to up over there but that makes kind of a real nice very contemporary look to roses and like i say you don't have to have that movement and stuff in the background that's up to you i'm more interested in you practicing that rose okay all right see you on rose number three